With the FDA strongly discouraging the use of 3D and 4D ultrasounds, also known as vanity ultrasounds, you might be torn as to whether or not you should get one. Welcome to the DeConta channel, where we discuss all things educational and we never duck away from difficult topics, including whether or not you should feel comfortable getting a 3D, 4D ultrasound for keepsake purposes. Now, you might be wondering why there's a controversy about whether you should get a 3D, 4D ultrasound to begin with. Well, as I've mentioned time and time again in previous videos throughout this series, in pregnancy and pretty much everything else in life, by the way, moderation is key. The FDA discourages the use of the 3D, 4D ultrasounds for three primary reasons. The first reason is that they're worried that you're going to be getting it done by an uncertified or unlicensed technician. The next reason they don't want you to get one is because they're worried that if the technician were to find something medically incorrect or something that makes them go, ooh, yikes, you might need to get that checked, that you wouldn't be properly medically counseled on the matter in that moment. So maybe causing you some undue harm or even some undue certainty that everything's okay if they hadn't said anything uh, one way or the other. And the third thing they're concerned about is that you would abuse this medical technology by getting this procedure, this 3D, 4D ultrasound done many, many times and thereby exposing your little one to unnecessary amounts of ultrasound heat waves. They're worried that this repeated exposure could potentially cause cavitation or tissue damage to your little one. Again, if you were to expose them to it over and over and over again. So here's the deal. Just like a normal, safe 2D ultrasound, a 3D, 4D ultrasound uses sound waves to generate an image. The main difference is that the 3D, 4D ultrasound waves are sent at many different angles instead of just being sent straight down, like in the 2D one. All of those multiple angles returning echoes are processed by the machine to generate a 3D image of your little one. And just like any sound waves, these sound waves are a form of energy. And just like any energy, it can produce a certain amount of heat. So the main concern, as far as I gather here, is that the prolonged repeated exposure to this heat or from a technician that is untrained or unlicensed, causing the machine to be set at a setting too high and therefore causing excess heat that's not necessary, could lead to birth defects. However, according to the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine, there are no confirmed biological effects on patients caused by exposures from present diagnostic ultrasound instruments. But the possibility exists that such biological effects may be identified in the future. So really, in my humble opinion, the FDA is being overly cautious here in suggesting that pregnant women avoid 3D, 4D ultrasounds for the sake of keepsakes altogether. But if that FDA warning does concern you, yet you still want to see those cute little chubby cheeks in there at least once, then this is what I recommend to play it safe. First thing, just plan on going one time and make that one time be between weeks 26 and 32 of pregnancy, since this is when you typically get the best images. Me personally, I went at 28 weeks, almost 29 weeks, I was right there, and I got some awesome images. Next, go to a location that does the 3D, 4D ultrasounds using only certified, skilled technicians. If you only plan on going once, and the person who performs it is a certified technician, and you're still getting your regular OB checkups to make sure that everything's okay and getting your medical advice from your OB or your doctor and not a random technician at a keepsake place, then rest assured that one time you go get your 3D, 4D ultrasound is not going to bring harm to your little one. For my one shot between that 28, 29 week mark when I went, I made sure I went to a place that hired technicians that were actually from the hospital. So the lady that performed my 3D, 4D ultrasound, 
used to work at the same hospital that my husband currently works at now. So I knew I was in really good hands when she was doing the ultrasound for me. And if you were curious, this is how my 3D40 ultrasound session went. <laughs> And by the end of the session, I even got a cute little stuffed animal that they put the recording of her heartbeat into, so now I can binge listen to my little girl's heartbeat whenever I want. Which I will, and I do. Other than feeling over the moon after getting to see my little girl in 3D format, what else has week 30 of pregnancy felt like? Well, good news is, is that little girl is moving all over the place all the time now. I constantly feel her, uh, her little feet up here in my ribs and I find myself sleeping like this to try and get a full gasp of air back in because she's so crammed on my right side. My hips are also constantly sore. If I try and lay on either side now, my hips are the ones that are screaming at me instead of my neck and my back and my shoulders like it was at the beginning part of this pregnancy. It feels kind of like I have super tight rubber bands pulling from the inside out on both of my hips. It's like a grueling torture, quite honestly. And the overall growth that I'm experiencing is also felt in my round ligaments, which are constantly pulling and stretching and achy all over the top of my belly and near my pelvic area. Super fun. And to top that off, in addition to uh, the growth, these are also quite achy and sore this week. So uh, bring back that lovely breast pain all over again. Hooray. Oh, and to uh, kind of summarize all of week 30, I feel like the theme for this week was compression socks. They have, they have been the only thing keeping my feet from swelling up like balloons. So thank you, compression socks. And it's no wonder that my feet are swelling and that I'm in so much pain overall because our little one is roughly 15 inches or 38.5 centimeters and weighs about three pounds or 1.4 kilograms this week. So that's roughly the size and roughly the weight of a melon, if you were to bunch up the baby doll, that is, of course. And if you're like me, you're probably thinking, there's no way that I could get any much bigger from here on forwards. <laughs> but rest assured, your uterus is going to find a way. And that way is going to be by extending up underneath your rib cage. So you can have an even harder time breathing as little one gets bigger. The Lanugo that I had mentioned in the past few videos, where it's covering their entire body to keep them warm up until this point, is now starting to fall off. And the reason for that is because they're gaining enough fat underneath their skin to keep them warm. So they don't need the Lanugo anymore. His or her eyes are becoming more and more mature by the day, and they're even able to track light at this point. Although their eyesight isn't perfect yet, and neither is it for a newborn, considering the average vision for a newborn is 2400, meaning that they can only see like an inch in front of their face or just a few inches in front of their face at best. And it's also typically around this time that your little one is going to be head down, getting ready to drop so that they can be ready for a childbirth. <laughs> That's our next adventure coming up in just a few short weeks. So if you've been on the fence about whether or not to get one of these vanity 3D, 4D ultrasounds done, 
I certainly hope that this information helped you make a logical and factual conclusion as to what you can do. And hopefully it clarified any concerns you may have had about the 3D 4D ultrasound in general. Let me know in the comments below if you think you'll still be getting a 3D 4D ultrasound or not, and why. These videos take quite a bit of time to make, but it would only cost you one second to like this one. And to join me in this 40 week pregnancy series or the super simplified science of pregnancy, all you have to do is subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week.